Hey everyone, welcome back to Oasis Zoo. Today we're setting off on an exciting journey to craft a brand new uh, home for the cheetah. One of Africa's most iconic creatures, really right up there with lions, elephants, and giraffes. Now, I'll admit I'm working on sticking to my tasks and maintaining proper building order. So apologies if you catch me jumping around a little bit in between different themes but I'm striving to keep things streamlined and focus on delivering some much better quality in this project. Now, in this episode, I decided to try out something fresh. We're using some sturdy rocks as the foundation for our guest fence area. And since we're all about cheetahs here, safety is paramount. That's why we're exploring some different fencing options to ensure their proper well-being. We've got our trusty wooden fence. And how did I ever miss that the North African wood beam can be colored too? It just made it so much more versatile. Now, I actually drew a lot of inspiration from the Toronto Zoo's cheetah habitat for this fence design, among others. Uh, so I guess they really know what works. We're also revisiting the chain link fence, and I'm happy to report we've really improved upon our first attempt way back in the Ottawa Zoo. I've added some neat new features, like a plate that acts as an anchor point for the chain fence, keeping everything in place. Uh, it might be a small detail, but it really makes a world of difference in the final piece. I also added an anti-climbing feature to the top. It's just a little bit of added health and safety for our guests, which should always remain paramount. Now, I've been grappling a lot with sizing issues in Planet Zoo. I don't think that's a secret at all. And the Discord community has suggested downloading the Archer. It's a scale blueprint that is the same size as guests, so it's helping to give a better guest eye view perspective. While I haven't done that just yet, it's definitely going on the blueprint download list. But the good news is that we built everything correctly, and thankfully, the cheetahs can't escape. Moving on to the main viewing area. My vision was really a blend of stone and that classic African architecture. Step one was crafting some anchor points for these structures. These beefed up anchor points add a natural touch and optimize space usage for the habitat. Avoiding having fencing everywhere is really paramount in creating a more natural environment. I incorporated some stone cladding on the top and bottom of the windowed area to highlight the stone. I intentionally skipped the wood beams this go. This helped to kind of create a better focus point on the natural elegance of stone. Off camera, I jazzed up these points with a few more details. These included smoothing the build out with flat cladding and adding these nifty shelves at the bottom, creating a much flatter and smoother rock. I imagine kids using these spots to catch a shaded breather and observe our cheetahs at play. We really want to create a more enticing environment for our guests as well as our cheetahs. For the backstage area, I wanted to break away from the ordinary. The stained timber building pieces are an absolute lifesaver here, and they might just be my new favorite pieces to work with. I didn't realize, but they can be colored too, offering even more creative control for the Planet Zoo architect. I constructed the initial frame and then dived into designing the interior. I opted for a bit of a distinctive shape to serve as the hard shelter for our new animal arrivals. This multi-purpose space also functions as a support building for the habitat providing our dedicated keepers a spot to prep for the day and watch over our cheetahs. My build actually took cues from a real life cheetah backstage blueprint that I found. And while there are some variations, such as missing the outdoor runs and additional safety aspects, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Now, I know it's common knowledge that cheetahs are the fastest land animals about, clocking speeds of up to 60 to 70 miles per hour, or for me, 113 kilometers per hour in really quick sprints. These remarkable creatures call savannas, grasslands, and open woodlands home. Giving our desert view setting, I've aimed to strike a balance between these biomes for that desert landscape, ensuring their comfort, but keeping with the initial theme of our zoo. Sadly, cheetahs are vulnerable due to habitat loss, conflicts with humans, and genetic diversity challenges. This is why partnerships with zoos are vital. They promote genetic diversity and support essential breeding programs. Additionally, anti-poaching measures are playing a crucial role in creating secure spaces for their survival in the wild. Now for us at Oasis Zoo, each cheetah is gonna have their own cozy enclosure accessible through these sliding doors that face the habitat. For the keepers, they have these fun little glass doors to gain access and clean up each day. Now we know that these doors aren't necessarily actually working, but it's a game. Now keepers sometimes have a more lackadaisical approach to health and safety in Planet Zoo. They typically stroll around while the cheetahs roam about, which is not really good for health and safety. 
But in reality, that's not how it works. Typically, zoos employ enrichment items to entice their cheetahs into their pens. They can then seal off the area using the sliding door that we're making right now. I tried to make something similar, uh, but admittedly, they are a tad too small for actual use, but we're definitely making progress on these types of things. Sliding doors, we employed quite a bit of the marquee metal poles framed by the thicker metal poles. Again, the color palette is a lifesaver when it comes to getting things just right. Now, I picked up a tip from our community zoo. One of our architects had this amazing sliding door that they used, and they had some additional pieces to give the wheels a bit more added realism. Now, have no fear, as we will be doing our tour shortly of our community zoo to see all the work completed by our first four architects. If you are interested in joining in on this build, head over to the Discord. Sooner the better, as spots are filling up quite quickly. Now, circling back to our shelter, to help enhance safety protocols, we've added some more mesh around the doors that our keepers would be using to enter the pens. This offers clear visibility for our keepers and vets to monitor our cheetahs. The glass window is also an extra touch for enhanced viewing by our animal care team. Now, for this, I used the modern glass wall for the first time, which is a much easier piece to work with when creating your own custom windows. We then border them with our plastic pieces to give them the idea of a safe and secure tempered glass window. Now, as we built the exhibit, I did end up shrinking it a bit. Overall, I found the area was just a bit too large and empty. And this is actually why I find smaller exhibits are so much easier to build. To help break up the space, we introduced a second backstage area. Now, this will serve as additional private space for our cheetahs to unwind away from prying eyes. We also added in some food and water sources to help keep them happy. Downsizing the entire build actually added a more unique charm to it all. Now onto one of our final touches, the foliage. I experimented with a fresh approach here. Our guest viewing area is gonna have three key sections, two small rock shelves that help to break up our elevation changes and a central rock where the cheetahs can laze about, stealing that spotlight. To maintain realism, I kept in mind that rocks shouldn't appear overly bulky and they would have sunk into the ground over time, meaning that we have to modify and you know do some terraforming to clean it up just a little bit. I also wanted to avoid another Fenix Fox issue, so I made sure that we had one flat piece achieved by using this large flatting piece that would act as a ramp to the top. I then filled in the sides with smaller pieces and tried my best to blend everything together. Now, the last essential element for safety was the installation of a hot wire. Now, a hot wire is typically used as an electrified fence to contain and manage animals within their enclosures. It's designed to deter animals from approaching or attempting to cross the fence by delivering a mild electrical shock when they come into contact with it. It creates a more natural barrier for our exhibits and avoids the need of fences in all areas. Now, our build, it's a bit sizable, so I'm open to feedback on how we can enhance it even further. We may do with what we had, but of course, there's always opportunity to improve. When it comes to the foliage, I tried something a little new. I started with our traditional green and yellow green grass. We've seen this before. I had to keep in mind though, that this area is a mix of grasslands as well as desert. So the colors need to blend together well. I also added some additional oak grass, all in an effort to bring in some extra colors and a much more wild look to the area. Then something hit me. To make things easier, I created a foliage palette. I put together a group of our favorite plants, like our drink grass, century plants, nitraria rutus bushes, papyrus sedge, blue stem grass, and various broken trees. This eliminated the need to hunt for pieces each time I moved to a new area and streamlined the overall build process. Now, I'd also like to address our upload schedule a little bit. As our builds continue to improve in quality, the time required is increasing as well. Initially, I committed to posting two episodes per week, but unfortunately, sustaining this pace has become a bit of a challenge. Therefore, I'm considering an adjustment to the schedule. We'll be moving forward with one upload per week. I wanna be honest with all of you. This decision wasn't easy to make, but I believe it's in the best interest of enhancing our overall builds and allowing me to invest more time in producing higher quality content. I hope that you'll continue to be part of our journey to improve Conservation Canada. Of course, I'm always open to your feedback. This is just as much a journey for me as it is for you. So feel free to leave your feedback in the comments below or through our Discord. Together we can improve and become better Planet Zoo architects. Now back to our build. 
we're reaching the final stretch with just two more areas on our radar. First up is our natural viewing station. To kick things off, I built up some rock pillars to anchor the corners. However, I wanted to bring in more minds for brainstorming, so I reached out to our Discord community. Big shout out to Lizzie and Sparrow for their fantastic input. After some fun collaboration, we settled on the idea of a thatch hut building. But before we get to that, we needed to lay down the walls. Remember that natural rock theme we explored earlier in the video? Well, that theme is making a grand return. I started off with our plaster corner walls, giving us the flexibility to create our own custom archways. It took a bit of trial and error, but eventually we nailed down the perfect shape. With the color and form locked in, we added a thatch roof and began piecing things together using our rock cladding. It was a mix of large and small pieces to ensure a clean fit. Now, my goal was always to cover as much of the open sand as possible, which led to us using cladding for the ground as well. A cool bonus was that it created some unique, non-traditional seating spots. Now, no exhibit is truly complete without a fitting name. So allow me to introduce you to Savannah Spirits, a name that I feel suits the fastest land animal on the planet. For the nameplate, I went with the traditional monocolor plastic background with a nice wooden border. For lettering, we went with the normal 2D fonts, and don't worry, I caught the spelling error in Spirits pretty quickly. I blame it on the pressure of spelling while recording myself. Now, did have to rework the sign just a tad, but we made it fit. Now, let's shift our attention to the final anchor point within this section, our customized education board. Taking some inspiration from our draft exhibit, I've carried over some similar themes to this board design. While our collection of cheetah artwork to choose from isn't vast, we've managed to make the most of what's available. Fortunately, we can adjust the color of the cheetah artwork to suit our needs in this case. To enhance the board's visual appeal, I've incorporated several elements. A refreshing look comes from a nice green strip that introduces a gentle angle, effectively breaking up some of those sharp lines. Adding a vibrant blue background with a touch of orange for sun at the top also lends to an overall inviting look. To help add to the education theme, I added some additional non-readable points to the board, using a comma and a bracket piece to act as a placeholder for various facts that our guests can read. And to give the setup an extra burst of color and charm, I've added some leaf signs to act as grass and to add some additional 3D depth. The result is a fun end product that I'm really happy with. Now our final area to focus on is the backstage section of our cheetah house. Now a fun fact, this idea actually came from a discussion in our Discord community about backstage spaces. Special thanks go out to Nini and Sparkle for putting together a blueprint featuring a range of backstage items. I've included a link to the workshop item below for those interested in checking it out. These items are highly detailed and I'm truly amazed by what she's put together for us. Within this space, we've introduced a food fridge stocked with an array of items that we hope our cheetahs will enjoy, a cage to help in transportation from our veterinary and quarantine facilities to the habitat, as well as boxes that recently arrived at our doorstep. Of course, we've also added an assortment of wall tools used to keep the habitat in order. Honestly, these additions contributed significantly to the final result giving a sense of realism that truly enhances the overall feel. Of course, no speed build is complete without a before and after photo of the build. As you can see, we've really added some life to an empty area and it fills in quite nicely. But of course, this is just a bird's eye view and I think it's time for us to see a live tour of all of our hard work. Welcome to Savannah Spirits Oasis Zoo's latest exhibit opening up to uh, support our two new cheetahs that we've added to the family. But of course, let's start off on our tour. Now, as we come uh, down from our uh, penguin exhibit or our uh, camel and wild donkey exhibit, we kind of see the addition the newest edition and of course i do gotta say i love the way this fence looks the the wood it could be a little darker i think maybe we need to go back and revisit that but i'm very happy with how it looks very natural and of course we have our chain link fence which is a huge improvement from the first chain link fence we've ever created which was i believe for the grizzly bear in a in an ottawa zoo and it was not good i will be the first person to admit it's not good but i think you know i think this is a great way for us to gauge you know how much we've improved compared this one to that one and you know i think we've seen a lot of improvement even having this little plate right here to act as like tie-ins for the fence to hold it all in place just looks really cool uh, so i'm very happy with how that uh, turned out of course on the interior of the exhibit because we're not just here for a chain like fence uh, we have um, some of the i would say best foliage uh, work I've done yet uh, and you know we went back and forth on this quite a bit I actually built this entire exhibit uh, and then tore it all down because I wasn't happy with the way it looked and I felt that the foliage didn't look that great so uh, I'm really happy with this new iteration 
which I guess leads, uh, you know, credit to the entire idea of you build it once, tear it all down, build it again, it's gonna be even better. So I'm really happy with, uh, with how this looks. Even the addition of like some dead trees and stuff like that hanging around, you can even see one just right here in the, in the brush. It looks really cool. Uh, I did add some stone as well to kind of give it a, a little, to break up all the flatness. There's not a whole lot going in the path, but we need to keep the paths open for the cheetahs to wander around. Um, so I'm sad. But if you guys have any recommendations on what we could put here to make it look a little bit nicer, uh, let me know in the comments. I definitely read them and I definitely hear and uh, listen to your feedback. In fact, um, the cheetah was actually driven by quite a few comments about opening up a cheetah house. And I'm quite happy with uh, what we've accomplished here. Of course, we have our uh, shaded area, our cheetah viewing area, if you will. Utilize more of the North African beams, colored again, just to kind of uh, give some added protection. Of course, you know, as a child, I would probably want to climb on these rocks, you know, climb as high as we can. So this is, uh, this is definitely for their safety and not just ours. <laughs> We do have our one-way glass. This is, of course, to help give a little bit of privacy to our cheetahs. And speaking of cheetahs, I don't see them. They are most definitely in the exhibit. They they are here somewhere. Um, so we might they might be in the uh, the other area. So we'll have to go take a look. Uh, we did add the second area because, of course, I am you know, focusing more on realism. And, and the exhibit would have a hidden path going back to their you know cheetah house like where they would den and sleep and stuff like that and i want to keep that open uh, ideally you know we would add another gate right here where we could kind of uh, close off and section it off oh speak of the devil there's the cheetah coming wandering around it's taking their sweet time uh <laughs> enjoying and checking out their new habitat but i'm really happy with how this looks even the rock mixed with the plaster kind of gives it that like oh natural feel i'm really excited about this this looks really cool I do, I do love these uh, exhibits, even uh, these tours, even having the bench right here, kind of like on top of the rock. So you could sit here, you could sit back here. I think it looks really nice. Of course, we have our uh, official education board and I'm really happy with how this turned out. We went with um, poaching again, and then of course, uh, gender diversity, I believe, um, to act as education boards. And then we have this, this looks really cool and I'm very colorful, I'm very happy how colorful it looks and like having the cheetah just slinking through the grass just adds a little bit of uh, really cool aspects to it. So I'm really happy with uh, how this looks. Uh, by far, yeah, so much better at education boards uh, than what we started off with. Now, as we kind of continue down, we have another viewing area and we can see the cheetah. I think I saw them. He's uh, wandering around just in the back right over there, checking things out. Um, but yeah, I love this. And this is uh, this is actually a uh, fire hose box. So this is a, an enrichment item. And I think I was talking about how they use fire hoses, uh, old fire hoses as a part of the enrichment tool. And this is an old fire hose, uh, fire hose enrichment item. So I thought that was really cool. And I didn't realize that totally un uh, unplanned. <laughs> now, as we continue around, I'm really excited to check out our backstage area. In fact, I'm so excited because I didn't even build this and this was provided by one of the Discord members. And I think it just looks absolutely phenomenal so of course we have our feeding uh food fridge and you can see there's there's four foods i think that's fish meat and then some more meat at the very bottom and i think it's just really cool and like the way they have it set up this is just fantastic uh even having like the coolers on the side to give it like a more of a fridge feel this looks really cool i never even thought of building something like this in the game fantastic work of course we have our transportation cage as well it's like a little plate of food in there so you know the the Cheeto would kind of wander in, take the food, this would collapse, and then it would allow us to transport them around and stuff like that. In fact, I feel like we would kind of utilize this with our, their little den right here as well. We have a preparation table, so for some food. So even though cheetahs are uh, they're, they're carnivores, uh, we, do, we don't really have uh, any meat to put here, so I kind of placed some, uh, some uh, fruit, fruit, vegetables, vegetables, that's where I was looking for. <laughs> Just a reusing of, a, of a, an old uh, thing that we built. And of course we have some broken down boxes, which makes sense. You know, we would have to feed them on a regular basis. They would take up a lot of food. So I think this looks really cool. Some more preparation tables, you know, observation tables can kind of sit right here and look in uh, and observe. I think um, what would be really cool, and I think I talked about this in the giraffe exhibit was like adding in some wiring for like uh, electrical wiring and have like a switch right over here so they can press the switch to climb it close the uh the gate i think that would be really cool 
I did make these as well, which are kind of like little boards for them to work on. So like important information would come up here. So we would see like uh, graphs and whatnot, uh, how to's and you know, welcome messages or, you know, notices from the vet would kind of go here and here. And we have two because we have two different pens. We have one over here and one over here. So it makes sense that we would have one for each side because maybe, you know, with this uh, this cheetah that we have some some different aspects associated with our care and well-being. So we want to keep that in mind. Now, I keep on calling them cheetahs because I want to see what names and we were kind of talking about this in the discord. I think I'm really good at making names for exhibits. I'm pants when it comes to picking names for animals. So if you guys have any recommendations for animal names, by all means, let me know. In fact, I've made one change to our game uh, in general, which is the I've increased their lifespan by five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start na taking names. And these names are going to be names that uh, you guys will pick and then they'll stay alive for as long as possible. And we'll go from there. Now, speaking of um, perspective, I did not realize that this door is that large. That's a huge door <laughs> that I got it. Uh, we might need to go back in and, and you know, rejig this around a little bit because this is a little too large for what we uh, we had in mind. So we might need to uh, we might need to fix this. That's uh, that's definitely not intentional. <laughs> Could you imagine having to pull these doors open? Oh my goodness, that's a, you know, a definitely a, a miss on my part. But as we go into the exhibit proper, we can kind of see we have our little protection cage. I did have a door right here. Had to get rid of it because it wasn't large enough for the cheetahs to kind of wander through. So we've had to fix that. Um, but it's definitely gonna be something that we're gonna circle back on and, and kind of correct in given time. We're gonna have to go with a sliding gate on this one, I think is gonna make the most sense. Uh, but we can actually see the cheetahs are going into their little uh, dens. Uh, which is really cool. We have some additional food items right here. So we have uh, food and then water, of course. So we want them to be able to feed and eat back here. And then uh, just some uh, enrichment items, just in case they're they're feeling the need to kind of, uh, you know, play around and stuff like that. So as we head back in, let's take a look and see if we can uh, check out. Oh, there they are. They're sleeping on their little beds. Perfect timing. I love this. This uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with this overall build, with the exception of the doors. The doors were not a good idea. <laughs> we'll need to fix that sooner rather than later. But this is our exhibit. Of course, a big shout out to Lizzie Sparrow and Ninian Sparkle because they've provided some amazing tools and feedback for us to improve this exhibit overall. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. So I just want to say thank you very much. Of course, if you like this video, think about subscribing. It definitely helps me out. If not, no pressure. That's OK. Of course, you can also leave feedback uh, through a comment or joining our discord and let me know what you think of the builds. And of course, if it's not too much trouble, hit that like button. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for all of this. And I'm really sorry that we're going to be going to one video per week. It's just going to allow us to focus more on better quality and improving our overall builds. Other than that, I just want to say ciao for now, everybody. <laughs>